Bye. Howdy, welcome back. Um, wanted to go over real quick some updates. Uh, so you'll see this probably looks a little bit different than the last video. I've definitely gotten a lot of work done and all of this was done off camera. Um, the control system I had already drilled a few months ago, already kind of mocked up, had it ready to go. It was hot in the garage, not the most thrilling work to be doing. And honestly, it would have been a lot of uh, time lapses of me fussing with little washers, trying to get it all installed. So anywho, I wanted to go over briefly some gotchas that I wish I personally knew before diving into the control system, before diving into the Ander fuel valve. Um, and I think brake and fuel lines were pretty much straightforward, but I guess jumping into brake and fuel lines first, you'll see those are not the stock uh, fuel and brake lines. Those are from, I think, Aircraft Specialty is the name. Um, it all went together really straightforward. It was easy peasy. Uh, did not get any of that on camera, but the way I saw that kind of an upgrade there was buy once, cry once. Um, I know that their system's gonna work. I know I'm not gonna rely on any of my uh, faulty flaring or anything with hard lines. So that is why I chose to go with their fuel and brake line setup. Um, is again the, the buy once cry once one is something that was going to be pretty much guaranteed to be um, a working product assuming that the operator the dummy behind the camera here installed it correctly so all that went on um, very straightforward and it's actually kind of a nice little break uh, from the rest of the uh, fabrication side of the build just being able to put lines together so wanted to get into the control system real quick uh, this system actually went together multiple times it came off multiple times um, what I found, my, my main gotcha here, is with these steel weld mints. All of them have character, they're all a little bit different. Looking down the, uh, across the control sticks here, you'll notice one of them even has a different bend than the other one. It drives me crazy, I will figure it out in the future. Uh, but in regards to the character, um, these ears down here. So um, I don't know what part number this is, but when you're putting together your control system, you're gonna know whatever part it is that connects to this hunk of aluminum here. Uh, that little gap, it calls for a thin washer and a standard size washer on each side. I put this whole system together doing that, but what I found was my ears on my weldments were slightly too big. So what was happening there is with the uh, two thin washers, it was actually pinching inward and the control system had a lot of drag in it. Even if I backed it up quite a ways, so you, you imagine that, that ear right there, it was really angled in to make up for uh, to make up for the gap and I think that was providing a lot of drag on that bearing and I would I'd be able to leave the control stick here and it would it would choose whatever location I left it in um, so you'll see now it doesn't and it has no play in the system um, the way I was able to do that again this is just my weldment yours will, will likely vary because they all have character um, but what I did is I ended up actually removing one of those small washers from each of these and I did two standard size washers on one side then a thin and a standard on the other uh, and that worked for both of these. And that's what really, really freed up a lot of the, uh, uh, the issue with, with my control stick. So I was not happy with it before, happy with it now. So uh, I guess the main gotcha here is when you're installing your control system, you may find um, that you may have to veer slightly. Another good example, here I added one more washer where I have this bolt here. I think the plans call for only one washer here. With only one washer, I wasn't getting a really good engagement on the cotter pin on the backside, so add a washer. So if I was doing this again, uh, when deciding how many washers to put in here, I'd be a little bit more of a questioner and make it fit with my weldments. Uh, so with this forward tunnel portion here, uh, one modification I did have to do was back in there to make room for those um, those braided brake lines. They're a little bit more, uh, they require a little bit more room I found than the standard rigid lines from Vans. Um, so I ended up making a little bit of a notch, which you're gonna see here, uh, made a little bit of a notch to the back and that provides just a little bit more room for those brake lines uh, to not be pinched in such a tight little corner. Um, taking this guy off, so the Ander fuel valve comes with, uh, at least I ordered it with the very long, uh, way too long of a piece in my opinion, but I, I wanted to err on the side of caution in case it took multiple attempts to do, uh, but I ordered the long uh, extender rod, whatever this is called. So the way I made my extension rod, I don't know what it's called, but the way I made this is I overestimated how long it should be and then just kept putting it on and off multiple times, taking off more and more material until my side dimples would accept the side of the tunnel. 
because uh, what will happen is if this is too long, it's going to lift this tunnel up and you obviously will run into interference issues where you won't be able to get screws in the side. So just enough to where I was able to get screws in the side of the tunnel. Um, and then I verified with a Sharpie. So I had it fully in there, snuck a silver Sharpie through the side here uh, and reached over to where that valve is. You'll see a little bit of silver Sharpie mark there. I reached over when I had it in there and I marked it at the top of the valve. So you'll see I have a nice amount of engagement there. I'm happy with it. So other than that, you'll see that I have a roll pin here. So I did have to drill and drive a roll pin inside of there. The kit comes with, at least the valve comes with the roll pin for it. Um, but if you're getting to this point of doing a valve like this, you will need a set. This old set here uh, was from an old gunsmithing set from when I built a, um, what, do you, what do we call it on YouTube? A, a modern sporting rifle. Um, I used this set for that. So that came in handy because you'll need a roll pin set. It holds that roll pin nicely in one of the ends there. You're able to start that pin down the side after you drill the hole, of course, and then finish it off with a punch going all the way down to where that roll pin is, is flush on both sides. So I'm not sure how other builders uh, are doing theirs, but I chose to pin mine to the top of the tunnel. That way when I pull this off, it brings that uh, extended axle with it, whatever we call that, and leaves this area open here. So next step, I think, is going to be painting. We do have wiring on order from Advanced Flight Systems, so should have that in here shortly. Uh, but I think I want to get stuff painted before doing that. Uh in on the paint job. Uh, did not record really any, any of it. Um, it was a lot of work. It's a lot of service service. I still don't have it all done. I have all the access panels over there. I'll probably honestly get to them at a later time. It could be one of those fun projects uh, where you don't have anything to do for the night in the garage. Uh, knock out a, uh, a prime and paint on an access panel. So uh, all of the, at least the interior services that remain in place are done. Uh, you'll see I did paint beyond where panels go. So for instance, this whole thing here could have been left shiny. I figured might as well hit it. So uh, it's not the most perfect thing in the world, but it is going to work well. Um, you'll also notice I have really fancy car mats in the bottom. If you have a Mazda CX-50, the rear floor mats uh, fit back here perfectly. Obviously they will not fit once the flap panel is in here, um, but just wanted to put them in here temporarily. I don't know while I'm getting in and out and whatnot. The passenger one actually fits really well, uh, only would need a little bit of trimming on the right side there. Obviously, again, I'm not going to leave these in the plane. Back to the paint. I'm happy with how it turned out. Uh, so next up will probably be an unboxing video. I have a shipment coming from Advanced Flight Systems. That's going to be in on Friday. Today is Wednesday. Uh, so I'll probably be doing a video there. So I'm going to end the video here. Not sure how far this has gotten, but so if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Adios.